understand that there are things that we do that actually deteriorate our abilities to live the lives that we say we want to live. I want to be an athlete. I want to be a scholar. I want to be an inventor. I want to be a programmer. Whatever it is, whatever you choose to do instead of that is going to be interfering with your ability to get better at that. And so when you start to realize that, your time is very limited. Um, there's a great poem from uh, T.S. Eliot called The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufra. There's, a, there's a, a refrain throughout the whole poem where he says, there will be time, there will be time. And he's saying this because he, he wants to, to, to do something in his life, but he's allowing himself to be put off from it. In other words, he's allowing himself to be distracted from it. In short, he's at a dinner party and he wants to ask a girl out. And the whole poem starts in the morning. Uh, not really a dinner party, it's an all-day party. And he wants to ask this girl out, and he's just like, I'm about to ask this question, but you know what? Relax. I don't need to rush it. There will be time. There will be time. And then throughout the poem, he says, there will be time. There will be time for a hundred decisions and indecisions, which a minute will reverse. He is unable to make a decision. And the poem ends with him having a vision of himself walking alone on the beach somewhere. Because he never gets around to asking this question, doing this thing that he, that he says he wanted to do. What stopped him was was pride, ego, but also a sense that he just felt so incredibly damn alienated from everybody around him. He didn't feel like he belonged. The poem begins with him talking about, uh, he says, um, and, you, and you pay attention to the language of it because he's trying to, at the very beginning to talk like a really highfalutin language because he's hanging out with very educated people, wealthy people, and he does not belong there. That's not where he's from. He, he, he's from the, the dirty part of town. The poem begins, he says, let us go then, you and I. Let us go then, you and I. He's trying to speak very highfalutinly. Let us go then, you and I, when evening is spread out against the sky. Beautiful. Like a patient etherized on a table. Ugly. In other words, he's describing the sky to like this naked fat man on a table who's waiting to have surgery performed on him. It's an ugly contrast. So he says, let us go then, you and I, when evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table. Screw it. Let us go through certain half-deserted streets, the muttering retreats of restless nights in one-night cheap hotels and sawdust restaurants with oyster shells. Streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent, and it leads us to an overwhelming question. Don't ask what is it. Let us go and make our visits. Don't ask what the question is yet. We'll get there. Let me just explain some things to you. And he never gets around to, ask, to asking the question. And so therefore, he never gets around to living the life that could have been. And then throughout the whole poem, he's like talking himself out of it. You know, at one point he's, he's, he's talking about, well, let's just say I do ask her out. And let's just say that, that she says yes. Then what happens after that? And he, and he describes these two scenes of, of, them, of, these, of this couple arguing before bedtime. And she's like staring out, you know, the first one, she just came in the room and she's taking off her shawl. And she says, that is not it at all. That is not what I meant at all. They're not communicating. He's trying but she's just telling him, you're just not getting it. And then there's a second time where it says that she's staring out the window and she repeats the same thing. That is not what I meant at all. And she's staring out the window because now she's thinking about leaving. And so he's asking, even if I do get around to asking this question, even if we do go out and we end up getting married and we have children, all these things, how's it end? That's how it ends. But he's also being pressed upon because he feels this, he feels this impending push of, of death upon him. He's unable to project himself into the future in any meaningful way. He doesn't see himself five minutes from now. He doesn't see himself two years from now. The only time he actually projects himself is walking alone on a beach, which by the way, some people will interpret as a metaphor for death. And so normally when you read poetry, you've got these poets who are like very, very bravely and you know pumping their fists like, you know, you know, boldly we rode in well. You know, you know that we we pushed into death, we were not afraid. Um, you were looking at, uh, at, at Tennyson, that comes from a Tennyson poem, Boldly We Wrote It Well. You look at, at Dylan Thomas, and he's saying, Do not go gently into that good night, rage, rage against the dying of the night. So he's telling us, you know, don't, don't just go quietly into death. But Prufrock, T.S. Eliot Prufrock, he had a far more practical and probably realistic view of it. You know, he says, Although I have wept and fasted, wept and prayed, though I have seen my head grown slightly bald and brought in upon a platter, I'm no prophet. Here is no great matter. I've seen the moments of my greatness flicker. I've seen the eternal footman hold my coat and snicker. And in short, I was afraid. <laughs> you know, 
So he's got this image of, of death standing at his, at his bedside, holding his coat, and saying, come on, it's time to go. And he's like, oh, I need to get my coat, let me, uh, and death is like, no, no, there's no more delaying. You delayed your question long enough, you delayed your life long enough, you interfered with your life long enough. Instead, I've got your coat, come on, let's go. Maybe that should be your homework tonight. You go to close your eyes, open them up, and imagine death standing there at your at your, at your bed waiting for you. He's got your hat. <laughs> Come on, time to go. <laughs> you know? But the whole idea behind it is that death is only something that's fearsome to him because he hasn't lived. He hasn't lived. I know that that's a cliche when we say you know, people are people aren't afraid of death. People are afraid of living, and we're like, yeah. No, people are afraid of both. Both scare the shit out of you. It doesn't matter. If you've lived a lot, or if you've lived a little, it's still like this, this, this ending of it all. But you can get to a point where in life where you don't see anything else, you can't project yourself at all past a certain time, a certain date, a certain year, a certain month. And all of a sudden, death no longer is, is something frightening. It can start to feel for some people like finally a release or a freedom from, from, from just the perils of existence in a lot of ways. And so this is something that Prufrock hasn't quite experienced because he is afraid. He is afraid. He doesn't see it as something positive at all. And I'd encourage you all, don't, don't go rushing into the inevitable. You've got plenty of time to, 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 to sort some things out. And especially if you get to the end of that, of that rope where you feel like you can't project yourself out into the future anymore, well, I guess my question would be, what do you have to lose? You know? Go skydiving. Yeah, why not? What are you afraid is going to happen? You're going to die? Ooh. You know, yeah. man, sometimes you can go on skydiving twice, all right? Because the first time you have parachute, and the next time... Yeah. When you go rock climbing, how terrifying would that be? How many of you, as I mentioned rock climbing right now, your palms are already getting sweaty because you're thinking about a high distance that you might slip from? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Just like about the chalk. Go donate it. Uh, you, you, you don't need your organs anymore. Go donate them somebody else live. All of these things, interestingly enough, is that they can give you a purpose, a meaning for existence. Suddenly you can find a way out. Perhaps that can give you a way to project yourself. Perhaps. Perhaps. Sometimes it fails. This is true. But these are all examples of the kinds of things that can be warring in your mind. Time. Time. There will be time. There will be... No, there's no... There is no worse life in the pit of hell itself than the idea that there will be time. There will be time. Yeah, I, I keep that painting over there on the wall, and you guys already know the story about why that painting is there. It's a reminder that there's no such thing as there will be time, there will be time. You know, peers, these are the things that make a life worth living a lot of times. The friendships, the, the human connections that you can make. When you, have, when you struggle to make those human connections at a human level, things get really dark, man. These wars in your mind, all of these things can come to characterize a life of, of oneself at war. And war is difficult, it's taxing, it's hard, you know? I mean, if you think about like, a friendship that you guys are always fighting, it's just very hard, or, or a relationship where two people are always fighting, and how that goes. That is not it at all. That is not what I meant at all, <laughs> staring out the window. So, yeah, man, when you're in these fights, when you're in these, these wars of your mind, and your peers, and your time, yeah, you're learning some lessons, but those are expensive lessons, man. This is why I would deeply, deeply encourage you guys to read. I would deeply, deeply encourage you guys to learn lessons from other people. Either I know we sometimes say, like, I have to learn my lessons on my own. God, I hope not. Because <laughs> there are so many mistakes you can make in life. There are so many pitfalls. There are so many errors that you can make. And a... And a any host of them can ruin your life, can at least make it feel like your life is ruined and destroyed. It's way better to learn those things from other people. You know? That doesn't mean that things are going to tra translate perfectly over into your life and things are going to turn out exactly the same for you, but there's a pretty good bet. And why don't you go up to the, build the main building here and jump off the top? Because somebody, not, not that building, but somebody else has already jumped from a high spot and you've read about it or you've heard about it and you say, wow, they went splat. I probably shouldn't do that. There are certain things out in nature, berries, or things you might walk across and go, I should eat that. <laughs> Somebody else already has. You know, they've done the, you know, there's, we, we can take our hats off to the early humans who ate shit they shouldn't have eaten, and they're now dead. And we can look at that and go, 
Thank you for paying the price. You know, other people have paid the tuition. Other people have paid the price. You guys come to me and you have a question about an essay, I can answer that for you because I went to college. I, well, I don't think, well, I was about to say I graduated, but I don't want to go bragging. I finished school too, so far. Always time to go back, I suppose. But my point is that I've already paid my tuition. I paid my bills, my, my student loans, all that stuff is paid for. And now I have this learning, and you guys can come to me and go, hey, Scanlon, how do I start a paragraph? I can tell you because I've paid the tuition. Old people have paid the tuition of life for you already. You can go to them and get, and get, you can get your questions answered. I'd encourage you to do that, man. Because otherwise, those tuition fees are high. You think student loan debt sucks. There's debts you can owe for people because <laughs> that you do not want to owe in life. Believe that. Do you believe anything? Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Happy Thursday? Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.